welcome back to another video on Gearsaw Studios, and today I'm going to be showing you how to build yourself a hotel. In case you ever need a tall structure for housing inside of a city, well, this is exactly what you need. So without further ado, let's investigate how we'd go about this. And because hotels are large, it's a large palette. I'm not going to be going over everything here. All I'm going to say is if you're doing it next to a road, say you watched my road tutorial and then you want a hotel next to it, then feel free to cut off parts of the nearby sidewalk. And with that, all you really need to know right now is you need to make a large gray concrete area to act as a parking lot. It doesn't need to be absolutely gigantous, but it needs to be decently sized. Considering a parking spot should be about five blocks wide, well, really depends on what car design you're using, I'm going to be using something that looks like this. So. I'd need 5 blocks, because you need a block on either side, because you can't have cars touching. So, with that, it's now time to fill in this area with grey concrete. Here, we have a very simple parking lot. Note that some of the cars are different colors, and that sometimes they're different rotations and go over the line. Even though it would look better if they didn't, let's be honest, some people aren't the best parkers. So. It would make it more realistic to do it this way. So, with all this in place, make sure that there's a proper place where you can walk in, as in, no parking spots in front of it, and then that will be the beginning of your building. Accommodate for the area around, and make the footprint for your building. Think about a lobby, a pool area, because, you know, fancy, and whatever else, such as a staff area and storage. But note, don't make a square hotel. Making a square hotel is probably one of the most boring things you can do with your hotel, hence why this is a remake. So what you want to do with this is make one square and then add on the rest as more, even if they don't go all the way to its full height because that's reserved for the rooms, still it would make a much more interesting building if it was more than one square. Once you've divided your building up into several different pieces, well, should look something a bit more unique. However, there's something you need to note. This might look like an ample amount of space, but the problem is, once you want to do the interior walls, then you run into an issue. Because I don't want to have the same stuff on the outside as the inside, we're going to have to go in one block. But even then, you might want to have your accents be on this layer, which means the outside wall would look like this, and then you'd have to go in another block for your own blocks. So you can likely see the issue here. So be careful, because most likely you're going to have to indent your walls by one. So this is an unrealistic floor plan. In reality, it would look something more like this. And you can see where I'm getting at with this. You lose a lot of space to this. And for smaller rooms, that might require a redesign. Well, I think this works good since that's the stairwell, and that's not even part of the building technically. Still, you need to account for this, so make your walls thick like this, and then see if they still work. A little bit of a jump cut, because I love accidentally deleting files and undo not working. Well, here's what double thick walls look like. You can see, I can have bright yellow walls in here, and still maintain the white on the outside. Each one of these areas is a different thing. The orange is a cooking area, this cyan area is eating, blue is administrative, yellow is the lobby, etc. And also pool area. But what you need to know is, of course, make sure that they're double thick, or you can try doing something more unique with the exterior. If you don't make them double thick like this, it might be a little tough on side structures to still have enough room, then you can just have the outside be that color too. It really provides some character to the build by having some pieces be multicolored rather than the same sterile white. So with that, you can also use glazed terracotta. Make sure to, you know, change the pattern a little. You can see the difference between this room with white glazed on the floor still looks good. Or you can have something a little bit more unique like this orange here. This is down to personal preference though, so don't feel pressured. And then, for lighting, you can either have an open roof, that doesn't work on some parts, but for something like this, which doesn't have many layers, sunroof works, 
or you can use Ultra A Frog White Slash Sea Lanterns. But you can see here, while it would work, of course, double wiring the floors, it doesn't look good from the outside. Solution? Well, place blocks above it. Who knows? Might work best if it's so exposed from the outside too, or you might decide it's not worth the effort to try incorporating, and that's fine. But just make sure that it doesn't look like a random block on the ceiling. Once you have your general thing set up with the lighting, not this room quite yet, then what you should do is decorate each room with things that you think would be appropriate for them. Maybe the lobby could have some seating, potentially even combine it with the breakfast area if need be, a bar if you want, small things like that. Of course, a kitchen will be here, here's a nice sunroof, and all the things that you think you'd want to include. So, of course, I'll be covering some of the notable things that I find interesting, but I recommend getting creative and looking at real life pictures for inspiration. After a while of excessive detailing, then your interiors should look quite nice. The more details you have, typically the better. Some areas I've left undetailed, like this small cranny here, you can see this is pretty boring. Same thing with right here, pretty boring. Even if it's not the most logical, it still makes your build a lot better when you do that. So going inside, you can see in this dining area, I have some candles, some food, etc. Then this kitchen, I found this cool sink design, I've linked the tutorial down below. And up here, well fridge here, we have a freezer. Not too interesting, but still something. And then with the rest of our stuff now in place, you can look around some in the administrative area, with a break room, an office, a vault, an incomplete carpet, I forgot to complete that, and then some basic things down here. So it's not 100% done yet, but it gets a general idea across. From here, what you need to do is start building your rooms off of a staircase. Build a staircase somewhere, or if you're feeling extra special, a piston elevator, although I am not responsible for how that goes and make sure that your floors, well, are floors. They should have big windows because this is a pretty nice hotel, as you can see. So nice tall rooms with big windows and make sure to make them pretty interesting. If they're empty rooms, well, add something to it. They don't even need real beds. They can have wool and carpet in order to make more interesting things. Once your final interior details are complete, then, what you want to do is start making rooms. I recommend about 3 per 4, depends on the size and quality of your hotel. If it's not meant to be very high class, then maybe include more per 4. If it's meant to be better, then do less and make them bigger. From here, make them. And I recommend doing blue walls, I just like the color blue for this. And big windows are how you make a good looking room. The bigger the windows, typically the better. But of course, don't make them too large because of course, if they become too large, they might just look weird. So something like this, even if you don't have connected glass mods, still, it will look pretty good. Then, you might want to use structure blocks to copy this a couple of times, rather than having to build the same thing repeatedly. Although this comes at the cost of your staircases likely not lining up, chance for entities not to be included if you don't check all the boxes, and the fact that you only have whatever rooms you copied, it saves a lot of time and you can potentially go back and then redo each room for each floor. So that way, you have three base rooms that you can work on and you still have the exterior. So build yourself a couple of rooms here and then copy them a couple times. With all your rooms stacked up nicely, then your hotel might look something like this. And if it doesn't, well, as long as it looks good, then no problem there. You can see this is almost done already. With a bunch of rooms stacked up, even if they aren't particularly unique from each other, still, the fact that they even exist is really what makes this build good. Of course, you can always go in there and make each one unique, but I'm doing this to save time and this video is already delayed. So, might as well get a move on. From here, there's only one thing left to do, the landscape and pool. Well, for this blob here, if you ever need to fill in a random space, 
I recommend just doing an azalea bush like this. Texture it a little with their flowering variant, that's it. And then, I recommend recovering the pool area in either a wall or a line of bushes. You know, privacy. This will be pretty easy. All you need to do is get a bunch of azalea trees, shear them, and then place down all the bushes here. And then, you'll have a nice hedge in order to protect, well, anyone inside here. So that way they can enjoy the pool in peace. Before doing the rest of the pool, if you copied my black accent, then you can put lettering on it. I put my own name and spaced it so that way it would fill up the whole column, but you might want to give the hotel its own name. Of course, this will be the Gearsaw Enterprises Hotel that may or may not have dubious tax records. And then we have the pool area. I already did the hedges earlier. Add some lights under them to make them appear glowing. And then a pool. You can see pearlescent frog lights along the edge, although sea lanterns might be preferable considering terracotta is one thing you can use, but prismarine is probably the best choice. So might as well get them all from the same place. And then we have these chairs of which I cannot seem to remember the name of throughout all of my takes of this clip. And then umbrellas. The carpets here are floating because of string. So make sure that there aren't any floating string around. A little area for ordering food right here, you know, more convenient. And then a towel rack, because we don't want people going into here and making it all one giant slipping hazard. So with all that done, your hotel will be complete. And you can see, it's quite nice. You might notice some minor oddities inside this, because I tried rotating it because I thought the back looked better than the front. You know, opposite of green. And then, yeah, you have a nice hotel, and it's a sure landmark for this place. You can see from afar, it looks really nice. And even if I think the front doesn't look nearly as good, still, it's perfectly functional. So, this is a nice hotel for decoration, or potentially a very intricate villager trading hall. And with that, it's the end of today's video. If you enjoyed this video, remember, please like and subscribe, it really helps me out. Either way, enjoy the rest of your day, Gearsaw out.